the tools and techniques talked about in the PMPOC guide are extremely important for your success as a PMP exam candidate. And for that reason, I want you to come have dialogue with me, www.pmanonymous.com. I'm starting a series on Wednesday, the very first Wednesday of February, and it's going to run all through February. And we're going to be talking about the ITTOs, the processes, the process groups, the knowledge areas, because you do know that even if you're taking the pilot exam or any of the exams the PMI is offering in 2020, that's right, let me say it again, any exam that you are taking from the PMI in 2020, it needs you to understand the tools, the techniques, the inputs, and the outputs. There is absolutely no escape in it. So it makes sense for us to go through all of these tools, all of these techniques, all of these inputs and outputs with a fine-tooth comb. So go to PM Anonymous and sign up. But today, let's talk about data analysis tools and techniques. Data analysis tools and techniques has got alternatives analysis, assessment of other risk parameters, assumption and constraint analysis, cost of quality, cost-benefit analysis, decision tree analysis, document analysis, earned value analysis, influence diagrams, iteration burndown charts, make or buy analysis, performance reviews, process analysis, and proposal evaluation. So let's talk about alternatives analysis. So when you see alternatives analysis, you see it across the board. You don't see it in Chapter 10. You don't see it in Chapter 12. That is highly debatable about why you don't find it there. But beyond getting into debates about the PMBOK guide, I mean, do you ever get into debates about the guide? Sometimes they're valid debates. Other times, waste of time. Leave it alone. Drink the Kool-Aid. Suck it up. It is what it is. It's what PMI said it is and move on. But in some instances, there is absolute cause for concern. You can absolutely challenge the PMI about certain things. And those are candidates for change in the PMBOK guide, and I've had a number of those. But in instances where things don't add up like alternative analysis, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, why can't we consider alternatives for communicating, for procurement? Why? It's not there. End of story. Move on. Okay? So if you end up having any of those gaps, my suggestion to you, my friend, is not to bother. It's a waste of time and effort. If there are major inconsistencies that are clearly wrong, then do alert the PMI. Okay? Let's move on. Alternative analysis. This is where you look at alternatives for a process or a procedure. You look at alternatives for carrying out a knowledge area. The next one is assessment of other risk parameters. Now, if you have not read chapter 11, there are many other parameters you can consider regarding risks, not just probability and impact. That's for schoolboys. That's the beginning. P times I is the beginning. You need to take it to the next level by assessing nine other parameters, manageability, detectability, propinquity, and so on. These are all talked about in chapter 11. And you, if you have not gone to 11.3 to examine these nine other risk parameters, you ain't started yet, my friend. Again, those of you just joining, go to pmanonymous.com if you are getting ready for the exam and you need tool, technique, input, output, knowledge area help, you need to be in my courses. And the first one is starting February 5th. Wednesday, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. You don't want to miss it. Assumption and constraint analysis really looks at assumptions that we make about the project and constraints, and we analyze those to find out if these are truly valid and if they are risks associated with our perception about these assumptions and constraints. The next one is the cost of quality, COQ. Under cost of quality, it is important that you know the cost of conformance and the cost of non-conformance, but under those two, you have further categories. It is important that you know all of those subcategories, pinpoint precise. Prevention cost, appraisal cost, ETC. 
If I'm training, what is that? If I'm doing destructive testing, what is that? If I'm involved in warranties, what is that? What is scrap? What is rework? How do we classify these negative costs? Internal failure cost, external failure cost, and so on. You need to know those cold. This is talked about in 7.2, but focus is on 8.1. And one of the questions I get from people is these bold letters or numbers in the PMBOK guide from 686 to 694, what exactly does this mean? Why is 8.1 bold? Why is 7.2 not bold? The reason is those bolder numbers show you where majority of the content is concentrated. So if you really want to get to the right place, go to where the concentration is. Cost-benefit analysis, 4.5, 4.6, 8.1, 9.6, 11.5. .5. What are we doing here? We're looking at the cost of doing something. We're looking to see if it makes sense. The cost versus the benefit. If it makes economic sense, we do it. If it doesn't, we don't. Decision tree analysis is the next one exclusively in 11.4. Perform quantitative risk analysis. This is so important. You need to know that. In the PMBOK guide, they've got an image. Make sure you know that image. Make sure you know that problem because you could encounter that problem on the exam. I have a breakdown of that problem somewhere on YouTube. Type in decision tree, crazy on. You'll find it. Document analysis is analyzing those documents to look for risks. That's one of the things. We find document analysis in 11.2, but we could also analyze documents for other reasons. 4.7, closing the project or phase. We need to analyze documents to ensure that truly this project needs to be closed. 5.2, we need to analyze documents to discover requirements. 8.2, again, we analyze documents for the purpose of managing quality. We need to glean all of these facts as we read the PMBOK guide. So don't just rush over document analysis. Understand what are we really analyzing and why. Earn value analysis is talked about in 4.5, 6.6, 7.4. And also, we talk about this in 12.3. But the place that you want to go for all those formulas is 7.4, control cost. Influence diagrams, next, 11.4. Now, in explaining influence diagrams, how helpful that you do not have a single diagram to explain a diagram. So I tell people to understand influence diagrams, you've got to go to other places. One of such places is on Wikipedia. Take a look at the influence diagram there, it could help you. The iteration burndown chart is exclusively in 6.6 .6 in the PMBOK guide. We see the story points and how those are burnt down, or we see effort and how it's burnt down, or we see some other metric and how it's burnt down to show us how work is proceeding on the project. It's very important that you understand the context of this in Agile. Make or buy analysis is used in 12.1. Should we make something or buy something? Should we rent something or should we build it ourselves? All of these our variations of make or buy analysis. Performance reviews is the next one. We do performance reviews across the project, but exclusively it's mentioned in a lot of detail. 6.6 .6 compared to the other places, 8.3, 9.6, and 12.3. Again, it's a debatable knowledge area because we could debate that you do performance reviews across the board. Process analysis is the next one, 8.2. What are we doing? Analyzing the process. Why are we doing this? Because we want to improve our processes and procedures, and we do it as part of managed quality. Last but not least, we have proposal evaluation 12.2. You are evaluating those proposals so that you can select a seller or sellers. Now, the topic of data analysis continues I would like you to do some research to understand regression analysis. In closing out the project or phase, you need to understand the reasons for your success or failure. Reserve analysis, you need to analyze to make sure you've got enough reserves. Done in 6.4, 7.2, 7.3, 7.4. And bear in mind, there are some errors in the PMBOK guide because 
Reserve analysis is done in 11.7, not in 11.6 like it does read in some of your PEMBA guides. Risk data quality assessment, making sure risk data is good and if it is inaccurate, fresh data needs to be collected. Risk probability and impact assessment, 11.3 as well. Your P times I matrix is decided upon in 11.1, but you use it in 11.3. Root cause analysis, analyzing to understand the root cause of a quality issue or a risk issue. I should say a risk, because there is a difference between a risk versus an issue. An issue is something that has indeed occurred. A risk is something that could occur. Now, it is important when you talk about that, let's open another can of worms, the topic of a workaround that many people don't talk about anymore. But a workaround is used for issues. A workaround is used for something that has occurred and unknown. But when we talk about risks, we have our five strategies for negative risks or threats. Those are different from workarounds. I would like you to research sensitivity analysis, simulation, stakeholder analysis, SWOT analysis, technical performance analysis, trend analysis, variance analysis, and what-if scenario analysis. And that concludes our review of data analysis tools and techniques. I hope that makes sense for you regarding your exam prep. I wish you all the very best. And remember to go to the three sites I told you. If you are taking the pilot exam, it's www.pmsucceed.com to sign up for Saturday training, five hours on Saturdays. You're also welcome if you're taking the current exam because all the information is useful. If you are taking the current exam and you want a smaller dose of that information pertaining to knowledge areas, not the soft skills, and nothing relating to Agile, then come on Wednesdays. Go to www.pmanonymous.com. And if you are interested in Agile exclusively, go to agileprinciple.com. All the very best. Remember, you have to put the time in, my friends. You have to put in the effort. Because if you don't, your exam experience is in the balance. And if you do, the payoff will be absolutely resoundingly huge.